Should you get the M1 MacBook Air or the M1 MacBook Pro? This has been a hot topic lately, so I wanted to make this video to clear things up. As you guys can see, I have literally all the M1 Macs and I've been testing them extensively over the last two weeks. Now, as you guys have come to appreciate from me, I get to the point very quickly in all of my videos, so here it is. My advice is that 90% of you should simply save your money and get the base M1 MacBook Air. It's a great machine and will perform amazingly for pretty much anything you can throw at it. If you're not sure if you need the 8GB RAM or the 16GB version, click the link in the top right hand corner now and I'll tell you. However, if you're doing a lot of hardcore things like gaming, rendering, 3D modeling, or other activities where the CPU and GPU will be getting quite hot, I definitely recommend the Pro, and it's almost entirely because of the fan. If you wanna know how I arrived at this conclusion, keep watching. Let's start off first with all the major differences between the Air and the Pro. Spoiler, there aren't many. The screen can get slightly brighter on the Pro, which I will demonstrate now. Okay guys, so this is really the ultimate test. As you can see, it is the middle of the Australian day, and we've got the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, both set to max brightness. As you can see, there's really not much difference. I personally can't tell much difference from here. The MacBook Pro is slightly brighter, but again, barely noticeable. Moving on, the battery life on the Pro is a bit longer. You get the touch bar. Ugh, I personally hate it. And also the speakers and microphone on the Pro are better quality than the Air. The chassis of the Pro is slightly thicker and heavier, and you also of course get the extra GPU core with the Pro, which I'll discuss more a bit later on. So is this worth the extra $300? Personally, I don't really think so for most people. Let's first examine the Air in more detail. As you might have seen in my previous videos, the Air performs very well. It can render 4K and even up to 8K footage without issues, and timeline scrubbing and playback is generally not an issue either, even with some LUTs and color correction applied. Rendering videos, Blender scenes, or Adobe After Effects compositions is entirely possible, as is hardcore multitasking using all the Office apps, 30 plus Google Chrome tabs, listening to Spotify, and also outputting to an external 4K monitor. You can also do some gaming and even turn your MacBook Air into a gaming rig like I did in this video. But what about heat? The MacBook Air doesn't have a fan. I know, I know, I was worried about that too until I did some testing. Link to that video up in the top right corner. Turns out the air regulates its temperature very well and thermal throttles very efficiently. I even put it out under the hot Australian sun while rendering 8K raw footage shot on a red camera. And although it did get very hot, it still performed surprisingly well. Don't do that at home, by the way. So at this point, you're probably thinking, why should you bother spending an extra $300 to get the MacBook Pro? Well, I tested that too, and it turns out that the extra GPU core, and more specifically, the fan on the Pro, gives it a huge advantage over the air in several scenarios. In some 8K footage rendering and also some Blender rendering, the MacBook Pro CPU stayed on average 10 degrees Celsius cooler and finished over 30% quicker than the Air. For reference, the MacBook Air CPU will reach around 93 degrees during rendering and gaming, versus about 84 on the Pro. During gaming, I noticed a significant increase in FPS on the Pro, while the exterior chassis stayed relatively cool, contrasted with the Air, which thermal throttled almost instantly, resulting in a decrease in FPS, and also a super hot exterior temperature of close to 50 degrees Celsius. So what does this mean? Well, if you're primarily a typical user who likes to edit some photos, do some hardcore multitasking, and do a bit of rendering, editing, and gaming here and there, the MacBook Air is the perfect machine for you. However, if you are more of a power user who often renders long videos or blender scenes or game for hours at a time and you're constantly pushing the M1 chip to its limits, you will see a huge performance increase with the MacBook Pro. I noticed distinctly that the longer the M1 chip is under extreme load, for example rendering, the bigger the performance gap between the two grows. 
For a 10 minute render, there's not much difference between the Air and Pro. The render will finish around the same time. However, if that same render is 20 or 30 or 40 minutes in length, the gap between the two starts to increase by a significant amount. This is to a lesser extent due to the extra GPU core, but primarily because the fan on the Pro is keeping the M1 chip much cooler. This allows it to perform at a much higher rate than it could in the passively cooled MacBook Air, which thermal throttles easily. P.S. You can have both of these devices on your lap without any issues. They stay quite cool. Unless, of course, you are gaming or rendering, then they can get a bit uncomfortable. So there you have it, guys. Hope you found this video useful. If you have any other questions or want to know something else about the new M1 Max, please browse through some of the other videos on my channel because I've likely already uploaded a video on that topic. Feel free to comment below as well, and I'll try my best to get back to you. But apart from that... Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.